America's relationship with Europe is long and complicated. From wars on opposite sides to fighting on the same side. Unconditional surrender. Victory over our last enemy. To a shared confusion about the word football. There have been highs and lows. But if you're not a fan of Americana, America First, or the Star Spangled Banner, then this film might not be for you. Because in 2022, the dollar is king. While the old world's currency plays second fiddle. This is the story of a 20-year relationship between the world's two leading currencies. And why, on very rare occasions, the value of the euro matches the dollar. Currency fluctuations can have a profound impact on commodities, raw materials, and businesses. And on Tuesday, July 12, 2022, something really interesting happened to these two currencies. They reached parity. That means they held the same value. Let's start with a little parity 101. If you hold one of these, visiting here, here, or here, is going to be an awful lot cheaper. American food bills might fall as commodity imports like grains start to cost less. But a strong dollar can be a headache for American businesses, as high prices make their products less competitive. And Europe faces eye-watering import prices, as some goods, for example oil, are priced in dollars. Here at Capital.com, we make all kinds of films and explainers, Click up here if you want to see our latest film on what affects the price of gold. Now, let's find out what's made the dollar so strong in 2022. If 2022 had a currency beauty pageant, the dollar would be in a class of its own. And that's thanks to the Federal Reserve. As inflation hit a 40-year high, the Federal Bank responded by doing this in March, by raising the interest rate a quarter of a percentage point. This in May. Half a percentage point. This in June. 0.75% largest rate hike since 1994. And this in July. Today, the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by three quarters of a percentage point. To fight inflation levels of 8%, the Federal Reserve started to hike interest rates. While the European Central Bank responded in the first half of 2022 by doing, well, not very much. In fact, you have to go all the way back to 2011 for the last European Central Bank rate hike. After 11 years and one week, as inflation hit record highs, the ECB took action and moved interest rates all the way up to zero. We decided to raise the three key ECB interest rates by 50 basis points. Here's our Forex and Commodities Analyst, Piero Chingari, who's been covering the Fed's recent rate rises. Despite the fact that the euro area inflation rate uh, rose to the highest level on record, the European Central Bank also considered the worsening economic outlook as a drug on growth, and these perhaps has prevented the ECB from hiking rates too fast and too strongly to avoid um, the onset of a recession in the euro area. To understand why this matters, we need to tell you a little about bonds. US and German government bonds are some of the safest investments on the planet and offer a fixed rate of return over a specific time frame. This graph shows returns, or yields, on German two-year bonds. As you can see, they're not great. But this line shows returns on American bonds, which are a little more attractive. Widening rate differentials between the United States and the Euro area make dollar-denominated assets more appealing to uh, Euro-based investors, basically fueling cross-border flows from Europe to the United States. The stronger the dollar became, the more currency began flowing from east to west across the Atlantic. It wasn't the European Central Bank that was the biggest driver of the euro's price during the first six months of 2022. It was the American Federal Reserve.
Europe started 2022 with a big problem. It was a problem right on its doorstep. Russia's war against Ukraine upended peace in Europe and sent energy prices through the roof. 40% of Europe's gas and 26% of its oil came from Russia. While Europe scrambled to find expensive oil from further afield, Vladimir Putin started turning off the taps. These combined pressures helped push up European gas prices by 378% in a year. For America, things were a little different. They were able to do this. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas. And that's because America didn't import any Russian gas. America's gas prices rose by 112%, but that was far lower than the price spikes seen in Europe. Let's hear from Piero again. The fact that the, the US is an energy producer uh, led to lower gas and oil increases compared to the Eurozone. The energy crisis pushed confidence in the Euro to lows only seen during the financial crisis of 2008, the Euro debt crisis of 2011, and the COVID shock of 2020. The economic impact has been swift and brutal. While the Euro area made a trade surplus of almost 70 billion in 2021, it opened up a trade deficit of 163 billion in the first five months of 2022 alone. It's going to take time and money for Europe to wean itself off Russian energy. And the German warning of energy rationing this winter could drive down confidence in the Euro even further. This film has been all doom and gloom for the Euro. So let's pause to remember happier times. More than 20 years ago, as the world was excited by the launch of the new European currency, politicians queued for photo ops and the sound of Ode to Joy was in the air. The initial confidence was followed by a period of buyer's remorse as the euro fell to a historic low of 82 cents, which was a dent in European pride. First, a gap between American and German bond prices pushed investors away from the euro, as we've seen in 2022. While investors, searching for a safe haven after the dot-com crash, were attracted to the dollar's power and security, rather than the newly formed euro. But then, central banks threw their weight behind the euro area, and its fortunes began to change. It was a quite strong bull run for the euro. Those years were characterized by uh, a fairly hawkish European Central Bank at that time, uh, which was willing to increase interest rates at a faster pace than the Federal Reserve did. It was boom time in the Eurozone. Frictionless trade, stability, and the end of exchange rates felt like the realization of the European dream. Back in 2002, the Euro area's economy was just two thirds the size of America's. By 2008, they were almost the same size. But then along came a problem that was American made. The financial crash of 2008 rocked confidence in the world's financial systems as economic contagion spread around the world. Like the prodigal son, anxious investors turned back to the American dollar as emerging markets and the Euro fell. When there is a global recession, currencies like the Euro uh, suffer more than the dollar. Uh, and that's because the dollar is considered a safe haven. The bloc's limitations began to surface. Member states were tied monetarily, but not fiscally, which meant that they couldn't stimulate their own economies by changing their interest or exchange rates. In 2012, the Euro started to wobble until the leader of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, said this. The ECB is ready to do whatever it takes to preserve the euro. And believe me, it will be enough. The rescue plan, which involved bringing down borrowing costs for indebted countries, brought the euro back from the brink, but it never returned to its 2008 highs against the dollar. The euro has come a long way since its rocky start. It now makes up a fifth of global exchange reserves. But when the world wants security, it doesn't head for the euro it invests in the dollar. Thanks for watching. 
Remember that the performance of the euro and the dollar will always vary depending on the changing market conditions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to stay alerted to our regular chart analysis videos each week and other explainers on big financial topics of the day.